morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Plastic Surgery 90210. We're here with Dr. Katzen. Hi, Dr. Katzen. Hello, how are you? Good, and Good. we're here with a special guest. This is Sandy. She came all the way from Hawaii for this. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha so, and mahalo. Yeah. So she's in town, and you've been following Dr. Katzen for over three years now. Yes. Wow. Yes. I have I started with not knowing anything. I still don't know too much, but then it's become something to me that's more like I might consider doing it one day. You know, in the past it would be like, ooh, you know, I wouldn't want to have anybody near anything, you know, but like I earned these wrinkles, but you know, there comes a time where it's like, hmm, you know, maybe it's time to pull the trigger and do something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And with, with of all the doctors out there, you know, Dr. Katzen, he's just has such a nice demeanor oh, and he's so gentle you. and just watching you you know when you have the patient there and you're like explaining things you're so respectful of them oh thank you you know and thank that's you very what much. drew me in really oh thank you maybe if you can tell me about like what's the most rewarding types of procedures that you do for yeah so for me some of the most rewarding uh, procedures are getting patients back to normal all right. So in plastic surgery, there are sort of two main divisions. There is the aesthetic side, and that's when we take a normal patient, if you will, and make them super normal. Mm. So we're doing maybe like facelifts, maybe like liposuction, breast augmentation, BBLs, things like that. And then there's the other side of plastic surgery, uh, sort of the origins of plastic surgery, the much older uh, forms of plastic surgery, where we take something that is broken, a broken body part, Part and return it back to normal. So that side is uh, very satisfying for me, taking things that are potentially broken and returning them back to more normal. So those are typically patients that have lost a lot of weight. So we're doing things like body lifts, getting rid of a lot of excess skin and fat and returning that waistline to a more normal shape. And then also in the uh, silicone injection patient industry, patients that live with daily pain in their buttock, mm -hmm. uh, lumps and bumps of migrating silicone throughout their body, whether it's the face or the breast or the buttocks or the thighs, getting rid of those complicated areas of scar tissue and silicone. And how do, what do they tell you after, like, how do they feel, you know? Oh, uh, elated, yeah. you know, uh, we have some patients who's really cool in the recovery room, mm -hmm. like as they're just waking up from anesthesia, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. It's like that. So about, you know, give me about four or five hours, clean out whether it's the silicone or get rid of a lot of the excess skin, they just feel so much better. A lot of our breast reduction patients immediately in the recovery room, their neck pain's gone, their shoulder pain's gone, their chest pain is gone from that breast reduction. Mm -hmm. So that's very satisfying as a surgeon to alleviate someone's pain. Wow. Yeah. Yes. In addition to the cosmetic and aesthetic. Right, yeah. right. So how do you get someone to actually do it then? You know, because I don't know until I get it done that I'm going to feel, you know, this much better, right? Sure. Sure. So uh, again, the patient has to sort of be inquisitive about it. They've got to sort of say, you know, what's this plastic surgery world about? Usually they don't really think of plastic surgery, I think in general, they think of, look, I have this problem. How do I fix it? So then once that patient sort of zones in on, okay, this is the solution, then we sort of guide them through, this is how we get rid of it. Whether it's with suction, maybe we're doing liposuction, or maybe we're cutting something out with an incision getting rid of excess skin or product mm -hmm. yeah so if i did lose a lot of weight mm -hmm. how would i know it's the right time should what if i lose more yeah basically we want you to lose as much weight as you can mm -hmm. diet exercise mm -hmm. eating right maybe ozempic zep bound etc and then once that weight is plateaued out for about three months then you're ready for these uh, surgeries but you know if you're gaining weight don't go into plastic surgery mm -hmm. okay because if you're gaining weight and we do the surgery odds are you're probably going to continue to gain weight after the surgery. So we have to curb, we have to restrict, we have to sort of put a halt, put the brakes on while you're gaining weight. Maybe it's a metabolic condition. Maybe it's just eating too much. Maybe it's not exercising enough. Maybe we need to educate you on how and what to eat. We have all those capacities. Okay, so don't go into plastic surgery gaining weight. The other thing is we don't want to go into plastic surgery if you continuing to lose weight. Maybe you've started a diet or maybe you've just had your gastric procedure and you're a month out and you're continuing to lose weight. Doc, you know, I'm losing five pounds a week. Well, great. Continue to lose weight. I'll see you when your weight's plateaued. 
So we like to wait to sort of hit a number and then no matter usually what you do, exercise, diet, yeah. your weight sort of stays there. Mm -hmm. And you can eat like a green pea a day and exercise 30 hours a day. I'm being extreme here, but uh, your weight doesn't fluctuate that much. And then is the time yeah, to have plastic time. surgery. So then you have the plastic surgery, you have the procedure, whatever it is. And then we find that patients lose some weight after the procedure. And those patients that get back into healthy eating and exercising after the procedure really keep that weight off. Mm. Okay. We know you professionally and we all respect you, you oh, know, okay. and your great work. And then now we get to see this other side of you. Oh, thank you. You know, it's so nice for all of us, you know, oh, and I'd love you. to see more of that. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. Of course, you know, seeing all the procedures you do. And for me, this one really interesting one was where you showed how the wraps, you know, how what they oh, do and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, yeah, I just want to say that, yeah, I just love the, the ones with your wife. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, that was so sweet. She, uh, your mom. You oh, know, the one, thank you. One. Yeah. The uh, the, so our wedding was in Hawaii, yeah. uh, at Sea Life Park. Mm. Uh, so you know that little bay right there, absolutely gorgeous wedding. It's like models. Oh, thanks. And the uh, <laughs> the seals were barking, I guess. I guess that's what seals do. And the uh, dolphins were jumping up and down. Wow! And uh, we actually got married. They have a ship. At, yes. Or they used to have a ship at Sea Life Park, <laughs> and we got married on the ship. So wow. it was kind of cool. Yeah, it but was very cool. They, did they look like models? They got mistaken for models. Yeah, so we're doing our photographs on the beach and everything. So this camera crew came up and started shooting pictures. And my wife and I are like, who are they? I'm like, I don't know. So they came up to us and they, low, they went, do you mind if we take some pictures of you? And we're like, yeah, I guess so. This is before <laughs> the internet and stuff right. like that. And they're like, we ask why? Well, if you could just sign this contract and we're like, okay, and this is on our wedding day. Okay, so I sign a contract or whatever. They were a group of um, advertisers from Korea and they were trying to advertise Koreans having weddings in Hawaii. So in Korea somewhere, we think there was a billboard of us going, have your wedding in <laughs> Hawaii. So it's kind of cool. So yeah, so we were models for that split time. Wow. Yeah. So you have experience living in Hawaii. Can yeah. you talk about that? So I love Hawaii. Hawaii is great. The weather is perfect. Every single day is perfect. It's tranquil. I love the greenery. And for me, I just love the ocean. It's surrounded, literally surrounded by ocean. Uh, so water sports, I love scuba diving, underwater photography, windsurfing, kite surfing. So for me, that's just perfect. I love the beach. So, yeah, love Hawaii. But why were, why were you in Hawaii? Oh, I was in Hawaii for my general surgery training. So I trained in general surgery at Queens Hospital, oh my goodness. Straub Hospital, Kukini Hospital, Crippler Hospital. I know I'm forgetting one or two other hospitals, but uh, those are the main core hospitals that we train in. And it's a level one trauma center, so you get all the trauma from Hawaii. Yeah. And people forget, you know, okay, they think, you know, what could go wrong in Hawaii? But you've got to also realize Hawaii is sort of a center for the Pacific. So mm -hmm. we would get big, terrible traumas from the outlying islands. So you get, you know, people that were in bad motor vehicle accidents in their neighbor island and then put on a plane and then six hours later they land in Honolulu for us to treat. So we get some really sick patients. Yeah. So what made you go from something like that, that's so traumatic? To... Yeah, so for, um, in general surgery, I really love burn surgery. So people that are getting burned from either flame burns or electrical burns or things like that. So I really loved burn surgery. So I went, I did a fellowship here in Los Angeles in burn surgery. Okay. And uh, it was amazing uh, rotation, really learned a lot and decided I really wanted to specialize in burns. So I actually did a fellowship. Uh, in burn surgery in Nashville, Tennessee at Vanderbilt. And uh, during my burn fellowship, I'm like, yeah, burns are amazing. But as plastic surgeons, you can do even more than just burn surgeons. So I trained in plastic surgery after my burn surgery, and that's how that developed. And then during that fellowship, really loved hand surgery. So I did another fellowship in hand surgery another year. And then after that, I'm like, wow, I really love craniofacial surgery. That's uh, surgery of the cranium, the skull, cleft lips, cleft palates, the orbits, brain tumors, uh, skull tumors, congenital deformities. So I did another fellowship in New York for that. Yeah. Just keep so, learning. Just keep learning, yeah. <laughs> so after, um, you know, four years of college, uh, pre-med, four years of medical school, mm -hmm. and then uh, after the uh, medical school, did about 10 years of residency and training after medical school, and then came to California. Math, math. 
Totally. So about thirty, about yeah. thirty-five years old. That's when I started to finally get a uh, a real job, as my parents called it, and um, started my uh, private practice. Wow. Yeah. So long road. That's an origin yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the long road to Kona. I guess so. Many, yeah. So inside your He was actually um, delivering babies. Yeah, in Hawaii. So many, many babies. I loved my OB rotation. Absolutely loved it. Um, I think probably over a hundred babies in, in Hawaii. Uh, so it's amazing rotation. I loved uh, delivering babies. I loved. It's called uh, gynecologic oncology surgery. Oh my god! That's it's so removing uh, tumors mm -hmm. from women. Gynecologic, amazing surgery. You're really helping out, mm -hmm. but it's kind of depressing because yeah. you're telling like twenty year olds that. You got six months to live. Uh, horrible, like ovarian cancers and things like that. So that was kind of rough. So I decided to do something else. But it's a very, um, you know, very noble, rewarding right. type of surgery. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, you realize, you know, just being with doctors that they they have so much. You know, it's all up to you. You know, yeah. and and your skill, your knowledge, you know, your outlook, right. And, and it all comes back to that patient, you know, yeah. and how they wake up feeling so positive about themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 If I'm interested in getting a procedure done, mm -hmm. what should I do to prepare uh, for sure. my consultation? Sure. I think probably the best thing to do is to focus on what bothers you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because some people walk in the office and they're like, okay, I need something done. What do you suggest? Yeah. And then when we get one of those patients, you know, we sort of, I start at the top and go, okay, you know, a hair transplant, a forehead lift, and then the blepharoplasty, and then the nose job, and then the facelift, and then the neck, and just go down like that. And when the patient leaves, they feel horrible. Yeah. They're like, oh my gosh, I need all these things done. And that's not really what we do or what the patient wants. Mm -hmm. The patient should really focus on what bothers them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So come into the office with sort of like a laundry list. Okay. The thing that bothers me the most is the tummy. Okay. Mm -hmm. The thing that bothers me, number two, is maybe the breast. The thing that bothers me, number three, is the neck. The thing that bothers me, number four, would be the face, sort of in that order. Mm -hmm. And if you can prioritize what bothers mm -hmm. you, it makes our jobs as plastic surgeons much easier, and then you actually get the procedure that you want. Yes. Some plastic surgeons, when the patient walks in the office, some plastic surgeons, most plastic surgeons in at least Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, they specialize in body parts, mm -hmm. okay? Whether it's the nose or the neck or the eyes, etc. So the patient typically will walk in wanting a facelift, but they'll walk up signed out for a nose job at the end because the plastic surgeon will sort of steer them toward their specialty and go, nah, you don't need a facelift. Yeah. You need a nose job, which I pretty much do three or four nose jobs a day. Mm -hmm. So you got to sort of be cautious that you don't sign up for a procedure that you don't even want or maybe even never even thought of. So just kind of before you go to the plastic surgeon's office, figure out what bothers you and figure out the priority of the things that bother you the most. And then when you walk in and ideally you sign up for, you will have the procedure that bothers you the most done first and right. then second, third, fourth. That is great advice yeah. because I remember when I first thought, I'm going to see you, I get to ask you, like, what should I do? Yeah. Right? That's right. the first thing you think of. But then, and then I thought, wait, I don't know if I want to know. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, figure out what you yeah. want, what yes. you want personally, yes. because as a plastic surgeon, you know, there are many things that can be done. Mm -hmm. And we have some patients, you know, well, typically we had a patient the other day, a uh, school teacher, and uh, she had lost about 250 pounds. She was in her young 30s. Wow. And me, I'm thinking, okay, she needs a body lift, she needs the thighs, she needs the breast, she needs the back, she needs the arms, and maybe the face. And I intuitively thought she would want the body lift done first. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we went mm -hmm. on with our consultation. But at the end, I'm like, and we created an order of procedures, body lift first, then the secondary procedure would be the thighs, and then the uh, third procedure would be the arms and then the breast. Mm -hmm. She goes, well, I don't really want that. I'm like, well, what, what do you want to do? She, rebuilt, she went, I really want my arms done first. I'm like, okay, we can do that. So we did the arms first. And then I asked her, you know, well, why do you want to do the arms first? Because usually most of my weight loss patients, they want their core, their mm -hmm. tummy and their hips mm -hmm. and their buttocks done first. And she goes, well, I'm in front of kids all day. I mean, I'm in yeah. front of the blackboard and Where'd I'm writing all the day. Mm -hmm. And I swear all those kids are looking at my arms yeah. first. And I'm like, 
Click, yeah. of course. Yeah. So for that patient, we did our arms first. So it really depends on what bothers you the most mm -hmm. first, as opposed to tailoring what right. I would typically do first. Right, because yeah. I look at myself every day and I see what bothers me the most yeah. every day. So do that yeah. first. Got it. But you're perfect. You know. <laughs> All right, so Sandy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for coming in and asking Dr. Kassin those questions. Thank you, I learned so much. Thanks, Good. thank you so yeah. much. And continue watching him. He comes out with stuff every single day on Instagram. They've been so funny, like the ones where it transitions. Yeah, You're that's so good at those. <laughs> it's all the editing, it's all the editing. It's not, it's not. No, it's the acting, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah, he's gotten fresh. better at acting. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, many mahalos and uh, thank you for coming all thank this way. You. Maybe one day you'll set up your practice in Hawaii. Oh, and, I'd love you know, to. All the beach bodies out there. To. Yeah, but there's, there, Hawaii is so beautiful and beautiful people, so nobody in Hawaii needs it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I will see you guys we next gotta week. We got to give everybody a shaka. This is a shaka. Yay. All right. It's uh, thumb and pinky. Mahalo, it's, doctor. Uh, it's the thumbs up in Hawaii. <laughs> awesome. Right. We got an extra finger. All okay. right. See you guys later. Thank Bye. You. Bye.